أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر 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 ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وعصيلا لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأيها المسلمون اتقوا الله أصيقوا وإياي بالتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديثه أعظم أيام عند الله يوم النحر أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was reported to have said The greatest day in the sight of Allah is the day of sacrifice Alhamdulillah, on this blessed morning we have been given the opportunity to celebrate Eid al-Adha a noble day that is full of barakah and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are truly grateful for the guidance of Allah. Allah that we choose, the Allah that we choose to worship, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance to this place of worship as our first act, as our first place of visiting for this day, alhamdulillah. Let us prove our gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by striving to increase in our ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The song of taqwa must be translated into practice, which obeying through all of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are people who do not pick and choose what we obey of our Lord, but we obey all of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the demonstration of taqwa. May we always receive the rahmah of Allah, the love of Allah, and the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and in the hereafter, inshaAllah. Ameen. In our khutbah today, inshaAllah, we'll be reminding ourselves Reminding ourselves of the lessons of sacrifice. For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was said that indeed the greatest day in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is this day of sacrifice. In this day that we commemorate the greatest of sacrifices by our father Ibrahim Alayhi Salam when he was willing to sacrifice his only son for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. On this day we commemorate the sacrifice by traditionally slaughtering livestock animals, whether are cows or buffaloes or goats, or even camels in some areas. This is a practice that has been done from the past. Even in the days of Jahiliyyah, they used to be sacrificing to the Kaaba, or they had other forms that they would sacrifice for. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purified that sacrifice for us and continued in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a few moments after we leave here, Many of us will begin to sacrifice, will be begin our qurbani on this day. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. Ameen. And for those of us who aren't able to complete our sacrifice on this day, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his infinite mercy has blessed us, that we may complete it on the next three days to come, the days of tashriq. Those participating in this ibadah will definitely attain its reward as it was promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this in mind, there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is narrated by Zaid bin Arqam radiallahu an when he said, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Rasulullah, what are these sacrifices? He said, the sunnah of your father Ibrahim 
They said, and what is in it for that? What is in it for us in doing this action? He said, for every year, there's a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they asked, what about wool? He said that for every year of wool, there's one reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. The ibadah of qurbani must be performed with sincere intention. As no reward is, no reward is received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any action unless it is sincere. As based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in sincerity we will find piety. And performing this action should be done with humility and honesty. Fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any act of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not be filled with pride or should not be filled with arrogance and should not be filled with insincerity. We aren't doing this for anything else except seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us remember this in execution of this action. In execution of this action requires money, energy, a place to do with cooperation, consensus and togetherness amongst our community members. Today, the Muslim Ummah is plagued with various moral crises. Among them is the division of the Ummah and lack of brotherhood. In, this, in fulfilling this sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires in these things that I've mentioned, in the togetherness and the venue and the cooperation, all of this only serves to strengthen the ukhuwa, the brotherhoods amongst ourselves. And this will be further strengthened this connection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed among the believers when he said in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Innama al Mu'minuna ikhwa. Sometimes we tend to forget the greatness of this of this quality among ourselves. Sometimes we for, tend to forget that one of the purpose of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is it for is for there to be unity among our Muslims. Among the great sacrifice of today. Many Muslims have to not only sacrifice an animal, but we are faced with many, many aspects of our lives in which we have to sacrifice something. Such as arrogance, such as egotism, or anania, pride. We look around in the world today, what, is, what do we see plaguing people today? Every single person, we might look at ourselves and we might see ourselves plagued with this sickness of anania. There's a terminology of speaking about myself, egotism. In which we are only concerned about that which what affects us and we tend to forget about caring for our brothers and our sisters and humankind alike and because of the lack of this subhanallah that is why we find so much illnesses that that plagues our society we find pride and arrogance these same qualities that cause the son of adam alayhi salam to commit the first murder the first murder was committed because of this same quality anania Pride and arrogance, all about myself, only caring about ourselves. And this crime and, th and these qualities have continued on to today, and we can see so many facets of our society being affected by pride and arrogance. SubhanAllah, today there are different, different forms of conflicts in the world today. When we look, as the brother was mentioning earlier in Somalia, when we look in Chechnya, when we look in Kashmir, when we look in Af Afghanistan and Palestine and Syria and Iraq and so many countries, subhanAllah, and what we find is a common thread between them all. These are countries, these are lands that are primarily populated by Muslims. On this day that we are sacrificing these animals, as on this day that we are sacrificing these animals, let us not forget the poor people from among us. Subhanallah, based on the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are encouraged, we are encouraged to share the meat that we get from the sacrifice. Share it with our families and our friends and the Muslims and the poor. Let us not forget the poor and the needy, my dear brothers and sisters. And let us not take for a, think for a single second that by us sharing our wealth, sharing of the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, that we are doing them a favor. No. It is only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating that opportunity for us to gain from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not think for one second that we are better than people because of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Subhanallah, let us look around, let us turn to our sides and look at those who are next to us. Islam has brought us all together regardless of where we are from, the color of our skin, the language that we speak, in regardless of the job that we hold or the education that we might have. Subhanallah, we all stand in one single self, all facing the one place, all praying to the one Lord. And this is the beauty of Islam. 
This is the beauty of Islam that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said that the brotherhood of the ummah should be like when one part of it feels the pain, the entire, the entire ummah feels that pain. But subhanallah, our society is such that we tend to forget this. The media is such that all that it focuses on is ourselves, even our countries today, even the Muslim lands today, all that they care about is themselves. Our country, my land. You ask an Arab where I'm from, I'm Egyptian, I'm Saudi, I'm Guyanese, you are, I'm Trinidadian, I'm American. People identify more to their land that they're from, more than to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm speaking here about Muslims. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came in a time and in a place where tribalism was the talk of the day. And this was the norm of the society. And subhanallah, with Islam, these same ignorant people, these same illiterate people, these same savage people, subhanallah, as was described by historians, so much so that the Romans and Persians, they considered them part of their empire, but yet they wouldn't even spend the time to rule them. They just considered them part of their land. These were the people that even the Romans and, and the Persians, they refused to go and try to rule them, just put them part of their empire. This was the level of knowledge But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Islam, subhanallah, they became a unified force. They became a unified force of people who would start a war over someone insulting or hurting some, a single person from their tribe or killing an animal from their tribe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the ummah together. Today, let us look around in our society and see how we are deviating from this one thing of unity among ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters. Even among our family, even among our relatives, subhanAllah. Sometimes we forget the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon those who are together when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Yadullahu fawqa al jama'ah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us that the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are with those who are together, are with those who are with the jama'ah. This deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not for the lone wolf. Even the scholars of Islam, even the pious people, when they want to seclude themselves in, in, to spend their time in ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will still be attached to the community. Even among the sahabas of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they differ on a matter, they would compromise, not compromise on their deen, but they would keep quiet so as to maintain the unity of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a noble tradition. This is the beauty of Islam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Today, subhanallah, we find ourselves differing in many matters. Primarily, we differ in matters of aqidah. We differ in, matter, we differ in matters of fiqh. And many of it stems from us not making this sacrifice to seek of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of these stems when a person will fight another person where they place their hand where it's on the chest or in the stomach or how they feet face when they're praying salah or how many takbir they say in salat al-eid. People argue of these matters. And the funny thing is that people who argue of these matters are people who need to seek more knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek more knowledge of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The seeking of knowledge is not only for the imam, it's not only for the teachers, it's not only for the scholars, but it is incumbent upon every single sane, mature Muslim. As a matter of fact, it is incumbent upon every single Muslim. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us this by the first word, He revealed to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Iqra. Iqra. Read. How much of our Ummah today do we even read? How many of us do we even make an effort to learn the prerequisites of our Salah, the action that we know is the key to our Jannah? How much of us learn what, what nullifies our salah, what breaks our salah, what are the necessities of our salah? But we prioritize other things above that, subhanAllah. The ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon those who make sacrifice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who strive and struggle in His cause. Today we are not asked to sacrifice our children as Ibrahim alayhi salam was asked to sacrifice his son. 
But today, we are asked to sacrifice from our own desires. We are asked to sacrifice from the wants and the things that we that our hearts strive for for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, we are asked to sacrifice our own shahwa, our own hawa. And these are terminology that speaks of our, our desires. Today, one of the biggest issues that plague our Muslim ummah is the interaction between male and female. Ghayr mahram people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited some certain forms of interaction. Today, we flaunt this line and we behave like if we are all the same people. And who are we following when we, when we behave like this? And when we say this is okay, this isn't Islam, my dear brothers and sisters. This isn't Islam. When our Muslim brother will meet a sister who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited him from touching and they will meet each other and hug. And they will go on social media and communicate with each other. Subhanallah, we might see these matters as trivial because this is the way shaitan trivialized these great, these great, great sins in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan has proven them, has shown, us to, has shown to us like these are trivial matters. So we trivialize them. Are we indulging them? We lie, we backbite, we slander. It is so easy, it rolls off the tongue, subhanAllah. And we don't even think a second of it. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he said a person who commits a bad deed and follow it up immediately with a good deed, with taqwa, with piety, with sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes it out. But how will we be able to follow up a bad deed with a good one when we don't even realize we are committing something bad? But this is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can commit sins. And when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even if your sins was like a foam in the ocean and you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, in sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will forgive. But how many of us raise our hands in, in, in tawbah and seek in the istighfar of Allah? Today on this day of Eid, how many of us remind ourselves that we are doing this sacrifice? We are coming to the masjid only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us we involve in our practices more of tradition than in seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is the purpose of this day, to remind ourselves. Remind ourselves, remind our families, remind our children and our parents and our neighbors. Remind them of our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today as we complete this sacrifice, let us remember the sacrifices of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us remember the sacrifices of the Sahaba Ridwan Allahi alayhim and the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een and all of the great people that came before us that have preserved this deen only through sacrifice. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to cry, Ummati, Ummati. He used to worry about his Ummah because they dedicated their lives in the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They dedicated their lives not only in bringing themselves to worship in Allah, but inviting those people who are not yet Muslim, inviting them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam and all the 120,000 plus prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was their sunnah, calling to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us don't we have a, a, a non-Muslim neighbor or a friend or even a, a non-practicing Muslim friend? How how many of us remind them of their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of us tell them about Allah, the creator of Allah subhanahu the creator who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, astaghfirullah, the creator who is our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we remind them and try to guide them and tell them about this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are people who are supposed to follow the footsteps of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teaching people and learning of this deen. Because when we don't know of this deen, it is so easy for us to get distracted. It is so easy for us to get sidelined. It is so easy for us to fall into practices that are hated and disliked and prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why when we look around in our community today, we, feel, we see many, many, many strange practices. And we are to ask them, my dear brother, where is this in Islam? Islam. They can't find an answer. Oh, my father used to do this, or my mother used to do this, and my foreparents used to do this. My dear brothers, isn't this the same answer that was given to the Prophet wasallam when he used to try to tell the people of his time about Islam? Those who still choose to disbelieve, even his uncle Abu Talib, 
when he gave him the da'wah, he said, no, I will support you, but I cannot take for what you say because I have to follow the teachings of my four parents. Are we like those people? Or are we going to be the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when guidance comes to us, when knowledge comes to us, we leave the things that which we don't know of and practice that which we know of. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, دَعْمَا يُرِيبُكُمْ إِلَى مَا لَا يُرِيبُ قَوْقَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ wa sallam Leave the thing that which is doubtful in your heart, the thing that which you are unsure of for that which you are sure of. And this is the teachings of Islam. It is essential that we seek knowledge of this deen because there are people in this world who want to utilize Islam to further their own personal goals and they will twist and turn this deen in all terms of fanatical ways. And subhanallah, this is partially the reason why Islam is looked upon as a religion of extremism and terrorism rather than the religion of peace. Rather than the answer that ails our society today, because people with little knowledge or, very, or, or no knowledge, they follow people because they sound nice. It is incumbent, my dear brothers and sisters, and I cannot stress this enough for us to seek knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must make sacrifices against our nafs. For the scholars of Islam, they say the nafs, if it is left untethered, if it is left uncontrolled, it's like a wild animal that is left loose will cause destruction and so too will our nafs, our own selves, our own soul. If it is not controlled, subhanallah, then we will be people who will be destructive to ourselves in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslims must have mujahada in fulfilling the obligations, must in fulfilling the obligations that were made for Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. From among the lessons of the ummah, from among the lessons of this day that the, that the Muslims could learn is that we must sacrifice to defend our aqidah of Islam for it is a pillar of strength and unity of the ummah. What unifies us all? Is it unifies us all because of the color of our skin or the language that we speak? No. What unifies us all is our unity in belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person will not taste the sweetness of iman until three things. And one of them is to love or hate a person only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the unity of our aqidah, our belief in Allah is one. And that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger. And all that is entailed in that, in that is the unity of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us strive and make sacrifice to practice that is only from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Keep away from things that aren't from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sacrifice in calling and conveying this message of Allah subhanahu to, to our Muslims and to society alike, whether it's at our workplace or whether it's our, for our family, let us not forget to give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us avoid suspicion upon any Muslim, for verily a suspicion in some cases is a sin, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. Always discussion and consultation and reaching a consensus when solving various issues that is of interest of Islam. This is imperative in our community. Let us not be people that do things on our own. Let us go with our jama'ah. Let us discuss with ourselves. Let us follow the leaders in our community and to our leaders let us continue being in jama'ah. Ever ready to sacrifice everything that we have in full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not think a second when an opportunity presents for us to sacrifice for the sake of Allah, whether it's our wealth, our time, our life, even for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this is a, is a reward is Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us curb the wicked desires that is in our hearts, that is always in, inviting us to do munkar or hateful or evil actions. And this will only incur the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't make sacrifices in these regards. To my dear brother, to my dear sisters, that is customary of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to speak to the sisters directly on this day of Eid. You are the mothers of this ummah. You are the molds and the architects of the present and the future of this ummah. The status given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none can take that away. You should learn your rights. You should learn of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that no one may oppress you and take away this right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you in the name of religion. Learn the rights upon yourselves as well so that you may not take away the rights of others. Be the guide to your children. Be the mold. Be their first teacher and their teacher throughout life. Be the guide to your husband. Be the voice of wisdom. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have expounded the greatness of the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of a wife in her duties to her husband. Let us 
Let us protect ourselves in the struggle to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us protect ourselves from our evils of our own desires and the evil of our own emotions and the evil of our anger and our tongues. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned to us that many, many, many people will go to the fire of hell being dragged by that which is between the teeth and that which is between their legs. My dear brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all never to lose hope. Hope in Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our sisters to learn, learn from the struggles of Hajar alayhi salam. Look at the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to her. Look at the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Asiya alayhi salam. Let us look at the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Maryam alayhi salam and Khadija alayhi salam and Aisha alayhi salam and all of the righteous women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised them to a status, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us learn from them, my dear sisters and my dear brothers. Let us not forget to be gentle to our sisters, to our wives, to our mothers. For our mothers at her feet lies our Jannah. And after our wives, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you are those who are best to his wives. Let us take heed in performing the, the ibadah of Arhiyah with the slaughtering of the animal and distributing it meets to eligible recipients we have been entrusted with. And many obligations that also require great sacrifice in terms of time, energy, money, lies. Continuously from all Muslims to ensure that Islam and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be practiced and remain glorious forever. Verily the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam must always refrain must always remain sincere in performing any act or deed that can remind mankind in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Allahu Akbar, the remembrance of Allah is the greatest. My dear brothers and sisters, let us utilize this day, let us gain from this day, and let us turn our lives, let us use this day as an opportunity to change something in our lives towards that which is good. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim unfiru hifazan wa thiqalan wa jihadu bi amwalikum wa anfisikum fi sabilillah thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamun and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, let us go forth in this day, whether light or heavy, and strive with our wealth and our lives in the cause of Allah, for this is verily better for us, if only we knew. My dear brothers and sisters, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our ruhiyah, our sacrifice, ameen. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our offsprings and guide them upon the straight path, ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon those who have passed away before us, ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant their graves to be spacious for them, ameen. For our parents who have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to remember them in nor dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant grant safety to our brothers and sisters in this day of Urhiya, on this day of sacrifice in so many different parts of the world, wherever they might be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them happiness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all happiness on this day of Eid. Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma. Allahumma aghfir لنا وارحمنا اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر وبالعذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحيا وممات ومن شر فتنة المصيح الدجال عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر